Dear colleagues, best regards from Germany and good wishes from FTEC. The climate change will have a significant impact on weather patterns, our ecosystem and also on our water resources and water supply. Here in the Federal Republic of Germany and in whole Europe, we approach the challenges that climate change poses to the water sector. The consequences of droughts, floods and severe storms. There are a few challenges, challenges that we must face. Many aspects need to be considered. Many questions need to be addressed in the water sector. How can we deal with changing weather patterns, such as an increasing occurrence of heavy rainfall and heat waves? How can we get our cities climate resilient and therefore crisis proof to ensure a good quality of life? How can we sustain water supply in the future? Also, we are currently working on further water related topics in Germany, like trace substances, a sludge strategy, microplastics and multi-resistant germs. At the same time, we are trying to develop a water strategy on a national level that is supposed to guide us until 2040. Of course, along with a new Green Deal by the European Union, with which we are trying to achieve the carbon dioxide emission neutrality of our economy in the long term. I wish all of you at WEFTEC a great success, lots of intensely discussions and above all one thing, that together we work well for the future for our water. We need adequate planning and risk assessment to ensure a long-term sustainability of the water cycle. Best wishes from Germany, all the best. Yeah, welcome to this small introduction to the German water industry. My name is Rüdiger Heinrich. I'm head of the Department Training and International Cooperation in DWA. And I was asked by my boss to join the WEF uh, the conference and to say something about Germany sector in a short uh, 15 minutes video. First of all, let's have a look uh, what are the facts about Germany. We have a water supply, we are 82 million people in Germany and um, we need 120, 124 liters per person per day. Pretty proud on that. It's only 6.5 percent in the drinking water and um, we uh, most of the water we abstract from groundwater, so we don't like to take it direct from the rivers. And uh, we have 18,780 water protection zones in Germany, so that means we have a lot of uh, taking care about that. And we spend 2 bil billion euro per year investment in water supply in Germany. We're roughly 9,500 wastewater treatment plants with 152 million population equivalent. That's a capacity, how we count that in Germany. It's a little bit different to the other people how they count it. We have more than half a million public sewers and about two times one million uh, kilometers of drains. And we have more than 50,000 uh, retention tanks in for combined stormwater handling in our system, which is quite unique in the world as far as I know. Degradation in the wastewater treatment plant, 90 99% BOD5, 95% COD, 98% nitrogen, and 91% phosphorus. Sludge, up to now we use uh, thermal, um, 52%, and uh, we incinerate, and 29% agricultural. Landfill is completely forbidden in Germany, so then nothing goes on landfill. And we're going to close down the sludge uh, handling on non-agricultural because we're going into incineration in the years to come. We spend four and a half billion euro every year investment. You see that all. What is DWA doing? Because I think that is also quite interesting to see uh, what we do. We are an association like the WEF people. Uh, founded after World War II. We have uh, 10 uh, committees, we have more than 330 working groups with more than 2,000 experts and they meet two, 400 to 500 times a year and we're creating a standard uh, which is about uh, 18,000 pages uh, and more than 300 different standards. We print the standards and of course these days everything is digital. We update these things 
updates are coming out every year and I'm head of the training we train in DWA all together 35,000 people it's a business and then we have of course software and we have TSM technical safety management that means this the system must, must work 24 hours seven days a week 365 days a year so that is for gas energy drinking water wastewater we do the wastewater the other things are done by other associations so that's roughly what DWA is doing let's see how the wastewater treatment plant developed over the year from 19, 1930 we had about 300 wastewater treatment plants in Germany then we invested a lot after World War II especially in the 18th 19th in Germany so it came up to 10,000 wastewater treatment plants and now we're going down a little bit to 9,500 because we're getting bigger units and they are connected. We started 1952 with 10 million population equivalent. Now we have 152 million population equivalent. It's all the industry which is also connected. Here in the middle you see the red line. This is development of our standards. These standards are quite unique. These are like clean standards, technical uh, best, best uh, available technology in Germany, what we do there. Just to show you some examples of this, one is the Expo Well. This is a research in Germany of the last 10 years uh, to base on our design standards how we do the areas in the world. So this is a standard which is not only for Germany, but it's also for the rest of the world and we sell it for 58 euros. Uh, and English, it's available in English and German. The other one is a reuse of wastewater, which is also getting very popular nowadays. Uh, especially oh, but uh, in the Arab countries and in other these countries they are doing a lot on this. So we develop a standard on that, what we do in Germany on that. And we sell these standards. Two more examples. Digital transformation that came up last year. So this is a, is a booklet and the standards how we're going into digitalization, how to motivate it. The other one is the energy checking on the wastewater treatment plant, how to do it what are the best way to do so we develop a standard on that as well uh, on um, energy checks for waste work this gives you a short idea about uh, these kind of things let's come back to germany as a whole look this is germany west and east germany is here you can see in the middle this was the border and of course west berlin had a special situation the rivers flow normally from the uh, from the south to the north or from the south here from Dresden uh, to Hamburg all the way so from northeast to uh, north so that is mainly the way most of the rivers you can also travel by ships so it's uh, possible to have cargo on the ship or have it some tourist time on the ship so a lot of lakes and rivers reservoir groundwater and you can see in south of Germany we have a lot of Alps quite two three thousand meters high in the middle area and then in the north of Germany it's a flat area what we have. Here in the next slide you can see the catchment areas so we have trans, five transboundary catchments and we have this river Rhine, Elbe, Oder, Weser and Ems. The biggest one is the river Rhine and here the Rhine River, Elbe and Weser, Ems and the smaller ones over here. So these are the main things. So here you see the rain pattern I think it's also interesting. Most of the weather comes from northwest, and you see in the Alps and in the western part of Germany, we have a lot of rainfall. The average is about 800 millimeter per liter um, per square meter, uh, and um, this is uh, the dry area is more the east part of Germany is more the drier weather. Flooding because with the rain, it also the flood comes and the melting of the rain comes and the melting of the of the ice in the, in the Alps it brings a lot of snow uh, sometimes but it's getting less snow but uh, when the snow comes we get a flooding area here all the red points you can see these are the flooding uh, areas so flooding is a big topic as well in Germany here the slides you can see the pictures how it looks like Let's come to another one, waterways. That's very important because we transport from Rotterdam a lot of goods going all the way up to the Switzerland on the River Rhine. You can go from the west to the east to Berlin by the ships. And if you see the silk uh, train from China coming, it goes to the uh, Duisburg Hafen Harbor. And from here you can distribute everything uh, around Germany by, in the container 
by ships, which is quite useful. Here on the other slide you see uh, the traffic, how, uh, what is most used, and uh, so there's quite a traffic on the on the river right here in the slide there in the middle of Germany. We have some concrete dams, but we have a lot of earth earth dams because the mountains are not that high. Um, when they are high, they're in the south south part of Germany and Austria, they have a lot of concrete dams as well. Ecological status, uh, what is the quality of the rivers? Uh, it's not that uh, what we expect to be. There's a lot of long way to go here on the red line. You can see this is uh, the, uh, the critical things here. On the other slide, you see the groundwater uh, availability. And here on the right side, the red one is a nitrate in the groundwater. And this is another headache because there's too much sludge from the agricultural on top of the farms and the groundwater is polluted. So we get a lot of trouble now with the European community. How the climate change in Germany? Here on this slide you can see we have two scenarios. One is the more easy one, but the other one is more severe. So you see East Germany around Berlin, Potsdam, all this area. This is pretty dry and uh, this is the area where we get trouble in the future when the climate change will continue. Germany is quite uh, enthusiastic to close down the uh, lignite mine areas, the coal areas, the brown, uh, the black, uh, black coal is closed already last year, all the pits are closed and now we're going to close also the lignite. Here this is on the area where I live more or less um, till uh, 2020, 38 it will be closed. And also nuclear power in two years we will close all the nuclear power stations in Germany. So we are living in a, in a laboratory in an uh, exciting uh, area how to change the energy from historical areas to new renewable energy. What are the challenges of tomorrow? Here you see a catchment area, the river reservoir, and then the, the area. So we will have a lot of new technology, optimization. We get the fourth stage uh, in the wastewater treatment plant because of the micropollutants. We want to get rid of them. We are looking for ozone active coal membranes in the fourth stage. So a lot of the research is going on in this area. Microplastic, a big topic. Most of the microplastic comes from cars. So, um, from the rubbers, and there's a big thing. What I said already, sewage sludge incineration is a big topic. In the next 10 years, we will have more than 20 new mono incineration plants, and then we recover from the ash the phosphor because the phosphor we need as a fertilizer of our farming uh, areas. The old technologies, our machines, a lot of machines are now. 30 to 40 years old. We invested a lot in the 1980s, 1990s. Uh, so we have to renew the machines and a lot of investment needed for the future. And also the sewer system getting older, so we have to rebuild and renovate the sewer system as well. Demography, we're running out of uh, people. Old people getting retired, the same with me, I get retired in two years and we need new people for the future, so we can have a big problem for the future on that. The digitalization, simulation, remote control sensors, and then the digital twins. This is a new challenge for the future and also for our education system. On top, climate change, of course, storm water, heavy droughts, and uh, we uh, have severe climate change in Germany now, so that is really something we have to change our cities uh, of tomorrow. Cyber secure comes on top, we have to make sure that our infrastructure is safe, a big topic in the future. Coming back to the training, because training is what, what uh, drives me, because I'm head of the training. We started in 1955 to set up the first working groups, and in 1984 we got the official government recognized qualification and in 2002 we updated that. We are still now working on a new update on that. So we need more and more qualified stuff because that's uh, something what we need for the future. 
Here, another point we started a couple of years back to start with competitions that we took from the WefTech. My boss was in the WefTech uh, in 2008 or 2009 and he came back, he said, can we do this kind of challenge in Germany? I said yes and we started in 2010 on the IFAD. IFAD is the biggest trade show in the world. I know that the WefTech always says that they are the biggest annual uh, conference in, uh, to, and trade show in the world, that's right. Annually it's right, but the biggest trade show in the world is the IFAD with more than 3,000 companies and more than 140,000 visitors every two years. And since 2004 we have an IO Expo China and we have Mumbai and here you see all the names in Istanbul and, and uh, Johannesburg in South Africa. So uh, on this trade show we started to create this, uh, our German, what we call Water Skills Germany and University Challenge. And then we kind of came to uh, WefTech Chicago. Here you see that our team and we had a very good time with our colleagues from Chicago. They trained us with an excellent time. And already uh, Steve Harrison from WFE came over twice to see us on the IFAD. So it's a good, very good cooperation between that. And in 2013, we started the World Skills journey, what I, what I say, a journey to World Skills. What is World Skills? World Skills is an initiative to get all the different countries joined into a water technology training. And we start in 2013, and uh, last year in Russia, we are our official school, and next year, we are in 2021, we are in China. And we're looking for forward to the that. So please, American teams, join up. It's for young people uh, to join. Last thing, the world needs more skilled water technicians. 80% of the wastewater in the world is not treated at all. So there's a big need for that. Please, guys, join in, qualify your stuff, and take care that everybody is on a, on a good shape. I wish you had a good time and you got some ideas about that. If you need more information, come to my uh, YouTube channel, Rudiger Heideweit. You find a lot of more YouTube channel over there. Bye bye and all the best.